Looking for magic cards? Shop at Flipside Gaming using promo code LVD or find them on TCG Player through my affiliate link. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at some footage from the Ikoria Early Access event, which I was able to participate in thanks to the invite from Wizards of the Coast, so therefore this video is sponsored by Wizards. And we played a bunch of different decks, including this black-white sacrifice deck built around Luminous Broodmoth, which has the Mothra alternate art, very powerful mythic rare from Ikoria, with an awesome animation, just wait until you see it. And we'll go over the deck building process, and then we'll show some games that we played with the deck as well. So hope you enjoy. So let's try a Sacrifice uh, Aristocrat type deck. So probably want Striders, Cruel Celebrant to burn them out. I don't hate the idea of Kaya's Wrath as kind of a reset button. Some of the Afterlife cards maybe. Priest of Forgotten Gods seems good. I don't think I want to include any cards that already have flying since that's a nombo with uh, Mothra. But yeah, Reaper could be good. So we have Reaper, Strider, Priest, Celebrant, and then we just want to fill out the deck with more Sacrifice fodder. Since now we have Strider and Priest as sack outlets, Kaya's Wrath as a reset button. What are some other good fodder creatures? I guess we have both Hunted Witness and like the new Garrison Cat that we could play. So those seem good. Maybe some afterlife cards. There's a Ministrant. Both Oligarch and Enforcer are options. Tithe Taker. I guess I would rather have it be a 2-drop. Since the 3s and the 4s are already pretty full. So no Ministrant, so that leaves Tithe Taker. Enforcer, Oligarch. Tithe Taker probably better than Oligarch. Alright, we'll go with the Tithe Taker. So we've got... 12 creatures we're happy to sacrifice, the token from Woestrider included. We've got the Broodmoth to play and then we can use Priest or Strider right away to get some value. And then Kaya's Wrath has a nice reset button to bring them all back. So yeah, this seems decent. Problem with Bastion is that the token itself doesn't quite synergize with uh, the Moth. Taisa could be okay, it's a little slow maybe. But of course has some good synergy. Could play two Tysas. Like maybe four Kaya's Wrath is too many. But it is a card I've definitely had good success with in the past too with these types of decks. Alright, we'll try this. And then we'll add some dual lands. And it's good that we have these white one drops since the Brood Moth also wants double white. So we can kind of skew the deck to, to be more heavy white than black. So, I've got our Godless Shrine, not sure how many temples we need to play. But then... Uh, let's say something like this, so we have 18 whites, including 12 untapped sources for the 1-drops, and then... We still have 14 black, which is probably enough. And then Priest can also make double black. Mothra's Minions, that's a good name. Gotta change our avatar. What's a good avatar here? I guess, uh, Kaya. Um, we're missing a sack outlet, but seems okay. Yeah, Witches Oven could be okay, but probably want Oven with the uh, cats and just want to avoid playing Cat Oven.
All right. So I guess I want to play Priest this turn and then next turn play Brute Moth and start sacking stuff. Maybe this is also an Uro plus uh, Brute Moth deck. We've seen that before. What else do we sack? Just a token? Or the Celebrant to get it back? Probably the Celebrant. It's a lot of triggers. There's a Kaya's Wrath. Now what? Play a Strider maybe? Could uh, potentially win the game with the Gaia's Wrath next turn. I guess I could play another Reaper first before we start sacking. Although then I wouldn't be able to necessarily Kaya's Wrath, which I may want to do here. So we'll sack Strider and Tithe Taker. And that should do it. Yeah, that did it. A look at us curving out. Black White Sorin instead of Taisa, yeah, could be fine. Although Sorin and Brute Moth kind of fill the same role of recurring creatures, so Sorin might be overkill. Probably gonna scry for land four here. Sacking the goats.
Do we keep going? I really want to make sure we have Brute Moth in play in case there's a Shattered next turn, so I think I do. Gotta wait for the animation to pass. It's so peaceful. I see. So they're on a Winota deck. We're just looking for like a Midnight Reaper, Cruel Celebrant, some sort of card that can help us uh, close out this game. Probably just send Broodmoth. Can make a bunch of tokens at instant speed with a Strider, Sacking, Cat and Witness. Hopefully no Agent of Treachery is here. Right, that's a miss. Do we want to sack stuff on upkeep? Or maybe now? Yeah, I guess I could s just sack a bunch of stuff. Like, the goat for sure. And then maybe I'll end up sacking these two. Uh, let's sack. I guess witness. Why no Mothra art? If you choose the Mothra art, you don't get the awesome Brood Moth animation. So that's a no-brainer. Alright, should be good enough. This is going to take a while to actually resolve, but yeah, pretty sure we have to kill. And our opponent packs it in. All right. So this is probably a real type deck. Hmm. What is my strategy here?
Hmm, I hope they're not actually playing the cycling counter spell here. Can send these at science. They could make another token and try and double block, so I probably still want to play Brute Moth first. Could also play Tithe Taker to make kind of force their hands, maybe. So I could spend a turn playing a bunch of one drops and two drops. And see if they have any counters. Right, they're gonna opt in response. Don't think I want to attack. If they have another card draw spell, they could ambush my creatures, and both of these are pretty important. But then hopefully we can go Brute Moth turn after Chaos Wrath, and that should put us in a pretty good position. Don't think we want to attack. Let's just pass. And then next turn, we're gonna attempt to crash the game with our Chaos Wrath. I mean, that's pretty good too. They have to respond if they have any sort of removal. <laughs> oh, come on. Don't even get to see all the triggers. So yeah, play Taisa. So... Let's say we sack Hunted Witness. We still only get one Flying Hunted Witness back, I believe, but we would get two tokens. So one Hunted Witness comes back with Flying. So then we can sack it again. So it makes four tokens, and we can sack it twice. And then each token we sack is two more damage with the Celebrant. So a single Hunted Witness with this setup would deal... 2, 4, so 12 damage per Hunted Witness, is that right? So we essentially have 3 Hunted Witness variants, so it was like 36 only with these 3 creatures before we factor in anything else. So yeah, it's pretty powerful. I mean, I don't think this deck is going to improve much if we keep playing it, I'm pretty happy with the current setup. I could see playing more copies of Kaya's Wrath, but as, as we've seen, Taisa is pretty busted too in this deck. 
I like the 12 sacrifice fodder creatures. Strider's great, Celebrant is great, Priest is great, Midnight Reaper is great. So there's like almost no flex slots in this deck. The new enchantment could be okay, the problem is it makes a token and tokens don't come back with Broodmoth. Which is why we're shying away from it. Much better to get these creatures like the Garrison Cat or the Witness that we can sacrifice multiple times with Brute Moth in play. Scorpion just feels worse than the alternatives here at 1 mana. So that's gonna be it for me today. I wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.